Hello, gents. Only 12 of the 45 individuals who've served as president have had the boldness to wear facial hair in office, and they all served between 1825 and 1913. Let's have a look at these follically favored fellows who graced the halls of the White House with their stately stubble. The first president with facial hair was John Quincy Adams. There's three things you need to know about our sixth president. He had a daily routine of skinny dipping in the Potomac River. He kept a live alligator as a pet in a tub in the White House. And he took his pork chop sideburns very seriously. Martin Van Buren was the first president to be born as a U.S. citizen, yet English was his second language. He grew up speaking Dutch in Old Kinderhook, New York. That hometown became his nickname, and while campaigning for president, he became known as the OK Candidate. Some historians believe the term OK originated right there to become the term we know and love today. But there's nothing OK about those sideburns. They're nothing short of majestic. Zachary Taylor was a wartime hero as a general in the Mexican-American War and the War of 1812. Sadly, his death was reportedly brought on from eating some bad cherries and milk, which led to him subsequently getting a gastrointestinal disease. This has led to rumors that he actually died on the toilet. Apparently, though, there is no historical evidence of that, so unlike Elvis Presley and Jim Morrison, it doesn't look like he actually died on the toilet. Oh, and he had sideburns. The most famous presidential beard was, of course, that of Abraham Lincoln. While campaigning for president, people made fun of his appearance a lot, and a young girl suggested he grow a beard to improve his appearance. He took her advice, and it probably got him elected. See my full video about that cool story. I'll link it in the description. And on a side note, at the same time Lincoln was in office, the only president of the Confederate States of America, Jefferson Davis, had facial hair too. I think we can all agree that Lincoln's chin strap was much more epic than the Jeff Davis weird goatee. Ulysses S. Grant was the first president to sport a full beard. And what a beard. He wore it huge at times as a general in the Civil War. When Robert E. Lee finally surrendered to General Grant, ending the Civil War, Lee was quoted as saying, Our natural affinity for beards brought us together and inspired me to make peace. And that is a quote that I just made up. As U.S. Grant's successor, Rutherford B. Hayes kept the full beard going. And like Grant, he also served as a Union general. He successfully oversaw the end of the Reconstruction period after the Civil War. His beard unified us all was a common phrase on the lips of Northerners and Southerners alike during his presidency. That's another absolutely real quotation and historical fact. James A. Garfield, yet another president who previously served as a Union Army general in the Civil War. Garfield never even sought the presidency. During the Republican Convention of 1880, there was a three-way stalemate of candidates, and Garfield, who was at the time a sitting congressman, was thrown in as a compromise candidate and actually won. One look at that face, Forrest, and it's easy to see how that happened. Chester A. Arthur also a former Union general, but in an administrative role rather than combat. He took office after President Garfield was assassinated, rising from VP to P. But when it comes to the facial hair, I'd like to address President Arthur directly. Chester, I like where your heart is at, trying something different. But wouldn't you only do that if you had a strong chin? Your triple chin isn't exactly strong. Isn't one of the main benefits of a beard hiding those double chins? My advice is to let it grow in and hide that snood gobbler a little better. Benjamin Harrison was the last president with a full beard. To date, that is. He was yet another former general in the Union Army. You know, with all these bearded generals becoming president, it's a shame Ambrose Burnside, the person whom after sideburns are named, missed the boat. Seriously, in researching this video, I found that so many Civil War officers had amazing facial hair. I should make a video about just that. All right, so from here on out, it's just mustaches. Grover Cleveland is the only president so far to serve two non-consecutive terms. He was sans mustache in his first term, but he grew out a mustache to campaign for his second term and kept it throughout. Now today, people speculate whether Trump wants to pursue a second term. If it's true, the blueprint is before you, Mr. Trump. 
Grow the stash. Reclaim the Oval Office with a nose neighbor on your face. Theodore Roosevelt was quite an interesting character. Seriously, we need more presidents with this kind of personality. He was interested in boxing as a youth, and even during his term, he suffered an eye injury whilst boxing in the White House. So he shifted his martial arts interest to jujitsu. But through it all, he always kept that amazing upper lip holstery. What a man's man. William Howard Taft, first president to own a car, first president to throw out a first pitch in an MLB game, and the last president with facial hair. And yes, he was the heaviest president and really did get stuck in a tub. Today, his appearance is the only thing people really know and talk about, from his weight to his spectacular squirrel tail mustache. So that's it for hairy-faced presidents, and it's a real shame we've only had naked faces in the Oval Office for over a century. Will we ever have a bearded president again? I foresee that we will, and sooner than you might think. That's right, after Kamala Harris takes office, I predict she'll stop shaving and proudly let her whiskers fly. You go, girl! See you soon, gents. Many people are speculating that President Harris will go full-on pirate. I personally don't buy into this chicanery. I mean, I guess it's possible, but it's highly unlikely.